Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Gamers Podcast. Um, today we're going to be talking about Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and I believe it just released last week. I'm not sure exactly what day, but it released just recently, I think on April 28th, or somewhere around there. I didn't really pay attention to the release date. I just know it came out just recently, and it's a game we're going to talk about. Now, some people even predicted that it was the best game of all time, and I don't know who that guy is, but... Um, actually, I think it was somebody on Twitter, but I don't know. But yeah, um, so... I don't really play Star Wars games. Uh, I mean, I've had ba- I played Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront, and I played like Lego Star Wars games. I mean, I've had you know this Battlefront gameplay here on the channel, I know, but like other than that, I really haven't played much Star Wars games. And just in general, I've never really been into the Star Wars movies in the old days or any of that stuff. So I'm not really into Star Wars, but I did read a little bit about the game. I'm personally not going to buy it or plan on playing it. But of course, I'm here to talk about it on the podcast because it is a game that come out, you know, it came out and I think, um, you know, I'm kind of obligated in a weird way to talk about it. You know, it's a game, I was reading about it and I think I'm going to talk about it. So, I'm getting this from IGN.com, um, it's just, you know, it's pretty much a review since, since I'm not really going to play it, I'm going to read their person's review on here. So, I'm going to talk about their review and a little bit talk about, you know, what I think of the game. Even though, you know, I could kind of talk about it from a bystander's perspective, because I'm not necessarily going to buy it, like I said, so. But, you know, I haven't heard very great things about the game. I heard the launch wasn't very good, um, so I heard a few bad things already. But, let's just jump into it. So, at first I was afraid. I was petrified. I kept thinking, how could I respond follow up on its outstanding Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order? But then I get spent so many nights playing the sequel, finding out how they got it right, and Calcasus grew strong, and I learned how to get along. And now we're back in outer space. Okay, okay, don't leave, I'll stop. The point is that it was vastly expanded combat options, bigger, more open maps, vastly more abilities to play with, and enough collectible stuff to fill a Corlean freighter, freighter, freighter? I don't know how to spell that. Freighter, I think it says. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is in many ways the Batman Arkham City to Fallen Order's Arkham Asylum, which, as much like the Arkham games did for Batman, nothing else convincingly captured. Playing for Force user quite well as this, which... You know, I can relate to that. I love the Batman Arkham games, and that's kind of my comparison there. Especially considering that there's no reason not to want to go back and play Fallen Order before starting Survival if you haven't already. I greatly appreciate that the sequel starts you out with most of the powers and the upgrades that Calhart already acquired. There's no corny amnesia or oh no, my powers are gone gimmick to make you relearn how to double jump or use Force Plush. I know Jaws snuck up on and stole away the climbing claws that make the scaling walls so much faster or the schkomp link that lets BD1 hack things. Outside of having to earn your healing canisters in life and Force Bar extensions, this is more or less Cal we left him five years prior. So we've already off to an exciting running start where things kick off with the brief caper of Imperial Crucishant. I'm sorry I bombed that. I don't know how to spell some of these things that he says or pronounce it, I should say. That calls back to a new hope before making a thrilling escape. You're quickly thrown right back into force, pushing stormtroopers off ledges and chaining together movement tricks like wall running, climbing, swinging, and sliding down ramps. And that's just the beginning. The Spider-Man style grapple, which only works on pre-designated points, is introduced to them before you leave Krasuka. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, I keep bombing that name. And and the unlocks keep coming from there with a rewarding pace. When you unlock the mid-air dash ability to pair with your double jump, things really take off. You can cover such crazy distances without touching the ground, changing directions twice to reach things around corners that I had to completely rethink what was possible. Moving around is definitely satisfying, but lightsabers are, of course, the stars of the war. Survivor kicks up excellent dueling from Fallen Order by several notches with five different fighting stances that are all brilliantly animated to create some of the flashiest, fierciest Star Wars melee battles I've ever seen. And of course, I'm talking about the review. This is all the stuff the review says. It's not me talking personally, just to let you guys know. Um, you don't even have to be all that good at nailing the timing of the strikes, parries, and dodges for you to fight to look spectacular and as smooth as you carve swath through enemies. But if you are good at it, it looks even cooler. And the fact that the arms and legs can sometimes even get severed by, from stormtroopers and other humanoids, not just droids and creatures, who absolutely get shredded, which makes it more gratifyingly powerful than ever during kill animations. You can only equip two of the five stances at any given time, which at first seemed artificially limiting, but and it is, when you think about it. But I came to appreciate it because it gave my version of Cal more personality as a fighter. You can, of course, swap out your stances at any mediation circle, but in especially the early hours when you only have so many skill points to go around and only one for your respect, 
Each dance has its own skill tree, so you're encouraged to specialize. And by the time I reached the second half of the story, I had my clear favorites and no regrets. It's a story that does the job it needs to do well, get you from one exciting action scene to the next. Early on, and quite literally by falling into it by accident, Cal finds himself into a race locate what's effectively a map to Lost Treasure Planet that's very much in keeping in with the idea of him as Nathan Drake of the Star Wars universe and leads to plenty of excuses to visit ancient, well-old, and abandoned at least puzzle chambers where you have to use your wits, the force, and an expanding range of gadgetry to solve them. Importantly for a game like this, the cell down feels like there's a lot of time and pressure to rush to the next objective, so taking a detour on a side quest to investigate missing prospectors in a mine, find out what went wrong with the droid factory, or investigating there's so many other rumors you have presented with by the locals. Does it feel like you're neglecting a responsibility to save the galaxy? And now it kind of gets to the, you know, kind of the critiquing sort of part of the review. So, despite being a largely enjoyable adventure, my main issue with the story is that nearly every big twist is foreshadowed so heavily that it was only ever a matter of time when a reveal would happen, not if. The identities of the main villains are secret as of now and shall remain unspoiled here, but if they're pretty easy to see coming light year away, in any case, at least they're written and acted with enough depth that they don't feel like retreads of anyone with Cal's face before, and neither is two-dimensional Sith Lord who has somehow returned. There's more to them at that than that, as Survivor successfully prioritizes character over plot for the most part. And that's kind of does it for the review. There is a few other things that I'm not necessarily going to read because it does contain spoilers. And I'm not going to spoil it for you guys who are going to play it. That would just be, you know, not cool. So, um, but I'm going to give my opinion on the game coming out and from what I've read so far. Of course, I'm not going to buy it like I mentioned, but I think I'm good to give an opinion on it from what I've read. I have done my fair research on the game. And, you know, even though I'm not really into Star Wars as a game, as a gamer, um, it's, you know, all the Star Wars games are pretty good. You know, some of them haven't gotten the best, you know, criticism from it, you know. And, you know, I am looking at Star Wars, not really from the story perspective or not really from any of the perspectives. I'm looking at it from a gameplay perspective. What kind of game is it? What kind of characteristics go into the game? You know what I'm saying? Like, what kind of game is it? Is it a good game? Is it a bad game? Is the fighting style good? Are the weapons good? Is all that stuff? That's kind of what I'm looking at. And I have seen some gameplay. And I think in that department, it's good in terms of the kind of game. The gameplay is good. The story is good. All that stuff is good, I, I think, in my opinion. The fighting style is probably my favorite out of the, all the Star Wars games that I've played. And the fighting style looks great in uh, Jedi Survivor. You know, I like the lightsabers and all that stuff. You know, like I said, I never really got into Star Wars games or the Star Wars movie themselves. But, you know, I do like the lightsaber part of it. And it really just looks like a great game, in my opinion. You know, without me paying attention to the story. It could be a horrible story, but it could be a great gameplay. I'm not really there to judge that. I'm kind of here just to judge the gameplay because, you know, I do like games and that's kind of what I'm looking at is the gameplay. So in terms of gameplay, I think it's a great game regardless of any of the stories. You know, it's kind of like me with Batman, you know. You guys know I'm a huge Batman Arkham game fan. You know, I'm a fan of all the Batman Arkham games and the Batman games in general and the Batman movies. So it's kind of like, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. You know, if you're a Star Wars fan, obviously you know, you're going to like um, the Star Wars games. Kind of like, I'm a huge Batman fan of all the movies and the comics and stuff. Of course I'm going to be a Batman fan of all the games, you know, you know, if, you know, if that makes sense. So that's kind of what I'm saying here. I don't really pay attention to the story, but the gameplay, great gameplay. So it looks like a great game. Um, you know, I don't really think I'm going to do a follow-up podcast for any of this. Now, there was a fair amount of criticism going into this game. You know, it didn't really look that good. I'm not really looking at that. It was just really mainly about the release. But in terms of the gameplay, it looks like great gameplay. I really uh, have nothing else to say about it. And it's not really a game I'm 100% interested in. I'm interested in it enough to make a podcast about it, of course. You know, it looked like a very interesting game. Did my research, watched some gameplay, and then I'm kind of not really going to pay attention to it anymore because it's not really a game on my list to play. But... That's pretty much it. So make sure to subscribe for more content, like the video, all the good stuff, Discord, Twitch, Instagram, links in the description. Um, if any of you guys out there play Jedi Survivor, let me know how it is. You know, I am genuinely curious to know how it is. Um, so yeah, leave me down in the comments below or just message me on Discord. You guys know my Discord, so message me on Discord, DM me, whatever, contact me in the Discord server. I'm always open, so feel free to do any of that. Um, yeah, I got some good stuff cooking up. Uh, so stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next video.